Well, thank you. Thanks. Does the microphone work? Sounds like it. Okay. So thanks, uh, everybody, for coming and being here. Still this late. But first and foremost, let me thank the organizers. Uh, this was great. And I think everybody agrees. So give them a hand. All right. Um, one more piece of uh, little minutes trivia. We're going to give away a week's worth of training with uh, Bruce Momjan. So if you're interested, put your business card in the bag there, and I'm going to uh, draw that later on. And there's another colleague of mine there. Okay, good. So let me start with uh, three easy pieces uh, to today's Postgres. And I'll, I'll give you my perspective or our perspective on, on where Postgres is, where Postgres has influenced things, and uh, what, what I think are, are important things that, that Postgres has, is currently addressing and needs to address going forward. So first, I think everybody knows that Postgres has had a, an incredible journey. This is a slide from, uh, from Bruce Momjen. I tuned and tweaked it a little bit, but you know, it's his credit to uh, uh, help me describe this properly, what has happened over the last almost 20 years. Uh, Michelle Metzges just uh, shared a picture from, the first, from a, uh, an early core team meeting um, at another, another presentation, and we had, uh, we had quite a good laugh at, uh, at what the team members at that time looked like. So uh, I, I think what's really important to, 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 to see today is that, that Postgres today is really absolutely enterprise ready. There really are not too many tasks today that Postgres needs to be afraid of in any way, in any whatsoever way. And we see that when we do uh, projects for enterprise customers, we see that every month. Okay, that is really a, a, a great thing for us today that there are not too many things where today with Postgres you have to worry about. So looking at that journey over the last, well, you know, 20 years, almost 20 years, um, you know, something that we've been talking about quite a bit here at almost every one of uh, the presentations that we've been given, we've been talking about this DB Engines ranking, right? I think everybody by now is familiar with DB Engines. Um, and, uh, you know, what's interesting is to look in there what the popularity of the different databases are and how the popularity is growing. So, you can see here that over the last two years, Postgres's popularity has been growing tremendously, has been going up significantly, and there have been a number of events or time points that have triggered this. I want to try to do a little bit as give you, share my impression as to what triggered this and what was important and for me, what was exciting uh, about this. So first, however, you know, maybe this is a little sobering because you look at the Postgres curve, yeah, you can see the Postgres curve go up, but there is a couple of curves up there, right, that are still very, very popular. So even though this graph that we just looked at is really, really impressive, okay, there is still a ways to go, okay? That uh, even though Postgres's popularity is growing very rapidly, there are still things that, that, uh, that need to be done. So from our perspective here, when I look at, when I look at market forces that are driving us today, um, that, that are driving our customers or, or things that we, be, that we are being asked for today, and again, this is just our view on, on what drives us and where we make our investment in, in PostgreSQL today. On the one side, you have innovation. Things like big data and innovative new workloads. And there, you know, the big buzzwords, obviously, Hadoop, Couchbase, Mongo, et cetera. Pulling, pulling Postgres in that direction or pulling the interest in that direction. And I'll talk a little bit about what I think uh, Postgres is offering in that space and why I'm quite excited about what Postgres brings to the table in that space. And on the other side, you know, ease of use where when we talk to users, why they are very, very excited about some of those products there. And where I believe Postgres still needs to work on closing that gap to make the use even easier. I mean, I know that we have the one-click installer. We now have tools like PG Admin. We have tools like, let's say, OmniPitter um, that, that make life with Postgres a lot easier. But still, there's a way to go. There's other tools that are showing us the way. 
On the other side, we have the enterprise requirements or enterprise demands where you know, the big names, the big vendors are people like uh, Oracle, HANA, uh, SQL Server, DB2. So there is, there is a performance frontier, a scalability frontier, you know, again, where there, is, uh, where there is work to be done. So this is our perspective as to what, from our perspective, drives Postgres forward and where the challenges are. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit is what I see has been done recently in these different areas and why I think Postgres is actually doing really, really well. And this, is, this goes hand in glove with the things, for example, that Robert Haas talked about earlier today um, when saying that, you know, the, the database is great, but there is work to be done. A lot of the work that Robert focused on was all about the enterprise requirements. So, and I'll try to, to, to paint a little bit of a, a broader picture there with uh, all the things that, uh, that actually have been done and why that's exciting. Um, Josh talked to us today earlier about uh, the, the shootout, the shootout uh, um, at the Pass Corral. Now, I don't want to go through the details there again, but what's exciting for me is that Postgres is so present in the cloud and the reason people go to Postgres in the cloud is because it's easy. It's easy to get started. It works really, really quickly. We see that with our own deployment and, and uh, uh, product, uh, product deployment of, of uh, Postgres in the cloud. So it's really exciting today to see that there are this many vendors and this many installations that make this work. Okay? Yes, there are differences between them, but they all address different needs. So when I look at ease of use as one of the forces driving us, there's been a lot of work and a lot of very, very successful work in that space. So I would almost say, as far as progress report goes, check, okay? It's really doing well on that side. Now, the thing that, that I find most exciting, and, and you know that, that uh, my colleague Vibor Kumar and I uh, have been doing quite a bit of work uh, this year and publishing last year around the use of, uh, of NoSQL and Postgres because I think that is really a fantastic story of Postgres not just catching up because some people, and I think Jeff Davis talked to me about that yesterday, have the impression that Postgres is always trying to catch up. This is absolutely an area where Postgres is leading with innovation and I think it's really, really cool. The idea that by combining what we have with standard Postgres, with document, with JSONB, so a document store, key value store, we've really created something that I call a Swiss Army knife for the DBA. And there is not one other product out there, open source or other, that can keep up with that. And it's really exciting that these capabilities have come together. And later on when we go back to that graph, you can see that the moment that became available and widely published, Postgres's popularity has skyrocketed. Now, did it happen because of that or just happened to happen at the same time? Who knows? I think it's because of that. Now, that may just be our view. What's interesting is uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Forrester published a study, and I'll make the slides available so you don't have to try to, try to uh, uh, take pictures. Um, and, and they talked all about the combination of NoSQL data with standard relational data. What is the struggle inside the enterprises? Why is that such a big topic? And one of the key things that they came back with is that organizations are unable to stop their developers from using NoSQL, okay? So that is a really, I mean, that, that train has left the station. Now what's happening next then is well, you know, everybody, however, wants to combine NoSQL data with SQL data. I mean, if you look at it, 96% of all the companies that Forrester talked to wants to combine that. Okay? So we're saying from the Postgres perspective, well, so where's the problem? Okay? The problem was that people didn't know that they could just all do it in, in one single platform. Okay? And the real desire is that they're now seeking ways to bring it back together. Well, if they used the right, most innovative database platform, they wouldn't have to seek ways because it would all be together. 
And for me, that is one of the really, really exciting things that in Postgres, you can have it both ways. You can have it structured and unstructured, and it all works well together in the same really exciting transactional context. And by the way, it's ACID compliant, which means it'll still be there tomorrow. And that's also cool, right? I mean, some other databases in jest, somebody's asked me, well, what's the real reason you would use some NoSQL databases? Well, it's plausible deniability. <laughs> Maybe you never had that data, who knows? So. Now, besides the ability to combine that, some may say, well, you know, but these other vendors are really, really fast, you know? Well, so some of you may know we ran these tests last year, and when we published them, they got a tremendous number of hits on our website. When we showed that actually on a single server, right, um, Postgres in lots of key workloads is significantly faster than Mongo, okay? So not only does it address a lot of the problems that IT operations have because their developers go rogue and then they're desperately trying to bring the data back into a responsibly manageable environment, right? They don't need to do that. It actually also is faster and uses less, uh, less um, uh, space on disk, okay? And many of you, Alvaro as one of them, have actually rerun these tests and Alvaro actually pointed out that uh, we had um, uh, overestimated uh, Mongo's performance. So actually, the performance was worse uh, than what we had originally thought. So again, this stuff is really cool. And what's even more exciting, it was there first. So it's really good, it's really fast, and it was there first. So as far as innovation goes in this triangle that we looked at before, Postgres is really, really nice. So when we look at it today, there's another aspect from that is, I think we can proudly say that NoSQL for us means something different. It does not mean say no to SQL. It really means that the, the, the new world of databases is not only SQL because the document data has justification. Key value pairs have real use. And the good thing about Postgres is, not only can it combine these two things, it actually stretches the envelope of what you can do with an ACID compliant database. And again, I think that's cool. Um, so the next thing, I talked, okay, we have these three forces, ease of use, innovation, and then enterprise. Well, even in that area, what we're seeing is that um, Postgres, underlying you know, Postgres Plus, which is really what this report was all about, but it's the same transactional engine, okay? Postgres was in 2013 put by Gartner into their leader quadrant for operational database management systems. In 2014, they moved it into the leader quadrant, from the challenger quadrant into the leader quadrant. We now have package companies, package software companies, who are moving their packages from leading commercial vendors onto Postgres, okay? We have lots of examples, and many of us know that, where, uh, where companies move their own in-house develop applications from DB2, Oracle, SQL Server, onto Postgres. So all of that stuff is happening. It's a significant, uh, significant enhancement in 9.2, 9.3, and now coming forward also in 9.5 as far as scalability and performance goes. There's more work to do, as Robert has pointed out, but this stuff is really working. Postgres today has been positioned in the same quadrant as the big so-called leading vendors. Okay? Postgres today is a leading database solution. That's what I want to emphasize when I talk about what are the forces that are pulling us and what have we been able to do in each of these quadrants. So, no, this shouldn't be. It. Um, so let me just bring that curve back that we talked about before. So you can see how the curve developed. And what's interesting is the things that I just talked about are actually the events that are driving this curve. Okay? So popularity and recognition of Postgres is actually driven by these achievements. 
okay? So the market or the users outside of this room are actually seeing that Postgres, you know, is crossing these thresholds, getting over these hurdles, seeing that, hey, you know, Gartner said something about Postgres. And suddenly, popularity rankings jumped enormously, okay? Then it puttered along a little bit, and then suddenly there was, a lot, there was the recognition that you could do JSON with Postgres, and that it really works. And that pumped the curve up to the next level, okay? The 9.4 release now is pushing us to the next level. Okay? So these things that I was talking about are not just sort of technical achievements. They actually drive the recognition of what uh, the, uh, market, the market's recognition of Postgres and the popularity of Postgres. Okay? So that's for me, I don't know, I'm a geek, uh, that I find exciting. That you know, these features, these knobs, this, these capabilities that are, that are um, being made available, they are actually being seen by a much, much greater audience out there. So all I can say in, con in conclusion, if you think about it, Postgres today, if you think back at this, on this, this initial line that I showed, and if you think back about how Postgres with early versions already influenced products like Greenplum, Natiza, Redshift, et cetera. So Postgres is much more present today than just what is shown under the label Postgres. So it has had great influence, and now it also has great market presence. It drives super innovation. So I want us to step away from saying, hey, it's almost like something else. No, no. It's actually, in many, many regards, much, much better than many of these other products. Okay? Um, and then, you know, for me, this idea of being able to combine NoSQL and SQL in the same environment and not have to go with different technology solutions, different vendors, different DBAs, different computer systems, different backups, different recovery. But no, you can all do it in the same environment. That, I think, is really cool. And then, obviously, we're, in, we're catering mostly to large enterprises. So the fact that we're now seeing enterprises move their enterprise-level workloads to Postgres successfully, that, I think, for me, is, is, uh, is the, most, uh, the most exciting thing. So, all I can say now is that, for me, I think with Postgres, the sky's the limit, okay? So thanks, everybody.